We'd like to welcome everybody to the Reapportionment Redistricting Committee meeting of the Senate. Today is August 16th. We have a, have a caucus meeting, as I put in the agenda that we sent to you, for the purpose of considering SB1EX. Members of the Senate, I would like to, um, first of all, if we could, we'd like, I'd like to take the roll, so I would like for um, um, Secretary of the Committee, Senator Bethel, to take the roll of the committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll mark the Chairman as present. Uh, Senator Towson. Here. Mark myself as present, Mr. Chairman. Senator Balfour. Here. Senator Chance. Here. Senator Ford. Senator Harbison. Senator Henson. Here. Senator Judson Hill. Here. Senator Jackson. Here. Senator Rogers. Here. Senator Schaefer. Here. Senator Staten. Here. Senator Tate. Here. Senator Tolleson. Here. Senator Williams. Here. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. I have 14 committee members present. We have a quorum, so then we will go. I'd like to bring to consideration before this committee, Senate Bill 1, EX. Uh, I have a committee substitute for the committee to consider. It's LC 285802S. We sh are passing out committee folders as we speak. Committee folders. Committee folders. <laughs> Gerald, committee folders. Judy, committee folders, please. Somebody, members of the committee. Um, so I bring for your consideration this committee substitute, which is the plan that was worked on by the Senate um, this year. I think um, we have operated in such that we have an open and transparent uh, process in doing this. Uh, in April, I sent every member of the Senate a letter, um, which was hand-delivered to your office, asking for your participation to sit with me and talk about the matters that were of concern to you and to the members of your uh, district. I sent that letter on April 19th, and in that letter I asked that members of the Senate please um, get with me by July 15th so that we could gather that information. Uh, I also sent numerous emails in giving days that I would be up at the Capitol asking for participation. The participation of the Republican caucus was very good. The participation of the Democrat caucus was what, uh, less than what I had uh, hoped. And, and frankly, expected. You thought that they would uh, come and, and speak with me. So I had to make follow-up letters, especially to the Democrat caucus, and asking for their to participate. Um, you know, if we don't have a fair and open process and people refuse to participate, um, you know, they can't say that it was not fair and was not open. So I continue to do that to sit down with members. We had a committee meeting for the purpose of adopting principles of redistricting. Uh, sent that letter out, asked for input, input from the committee members of that input. Uh, for, for those, those, we held the meeting, we adopted principles, and then I began working on, um, began working on putting together a plan. Would note that. Fourteen members of the uh, Democrat caucus um, to come and specifically talk about their districts of that. If I look at this correctly, 12 did not even come talk to me until after the July 15 deadline. But I still gave opportunity to sit down and talk about their input on their district. Then I worked 
systematically with each senator putting the pieces together on districts. I will say that when I sat down to talk about specific districts with individual members of the Senate, I got different reactions from individuals. I had some that sat down and talked about certain precincts they wanted to try to move and see if we could accommodate in that, and we tried to work with those. I had others that just threw their hands up and walked out of my office and refused to talk to me, refused to, to engage any further about what to do with any kind of a district. I had those who we tried to work with on, uh, on a, uh, a map, ask if they could support the map, and they, would, they said that they necessarily couldn't. But I still incorporated the principles that they had given me as much as I could, the things that they wanted. Um, so I did what I could to accommodate as many that would, that would cooperate. This plan is a combination of the Senate drawing this plan. This is not the governor's plan. It is not the lieutenant governor's plan. It is not the Republican leadership's plan. It's not my plan. We didn't draw it. Members of the Senate came together and put these pieces together to draw this map. Um, and so with that, Matt, do you have the stat sheets? Everybody's got the stat sheets? I'd like for you to look at the stat sheets. Senator, I'm going to present the bill and then we can, we can talk. Um, I want to show in this plan, we talked about the principles that we adopted in this redistricting, in this committee to develop this plan. You'll see before you, there are three plans that I'm putting in, out here for you to look at. It's the Senate plan in 2002, what the court drew in 2004, and what SimProp 1, this current plan, does. And these are the statistics I want to give to you. The, the, in our principles, we talked about adherence to the United States Constitution and to keep the deviation as low as possible. In 2002, the Senate plan, the average deviation was 3.8. When the courts drew the map, their deviation, average deviation was 0.6. This plan, the average deviation is 0.6. We also talked about that, uh, also on deviation, the deviation range that was used. In 2002, there was a, uh, the, the, uh, there was a district that was at a negative 4.94, all the way up to a district that was 0.4, it was 4.99 percent overpopulated. When the courts drew this map, the range went from minus 0.99 to plus 0.95. This plan has a deviation range of minus 0.95 to plus 0.89. I'm not an attorney, but I am a financial person, and I would look at, when I look at the range and the deviation, we either met or exceeded what the courts did when they drew the plan in 2004. We also said as our principle that we would adhere to the Voting Rights Act. In 2002, the Senate plan contained 14 majority-minority districts. The 2004 plan drawn by the court had 14 majority-minority districts. Sin Prop 1 has 15 majority minority districts. So I can say that we did adhere to Voting Rights Act, both Section 2 and Section 5. We did not re retrogress and we did not dilute minority vote. Our principle was to comply with the U.S. and Georgia constitutions. The Constitution requires that all, that all districts be contiguous. In 2002, 2004, that was done. And in 2011, we met that criteria. In the Senate, the Constitution prohibits multi-member districts. That's one of our principles, though, and this, does not, this plan does not in any way have multi-member districts. Our district also had um, other matters of consideration after legal consideration, aspirational um, uh, principles, as many people refer to them. One of them is recognizing political boundaries, counties and precincts. In, 19, in 2002, the Senate plan split 81 counties. 2004, the court split 40 counties. The plan before you today splits 38 counties. 
precinct splits. It's amazing of the members I spoke with the, uh, with the, with the Senate who this was a, a, a matter of great consideration or concern for them was precinct splits. They said, I know people that, that think they're in his precinct and their neighbors don't vote for the same person. And we had that as one of our aspirational guidelines. In 2002, the map split 159 precincts. In 2004, the court split 138. Our plan splits less than 50. And let me just explain real quick why I say less than 50, because the census was taken based upon the 2008 precincts. We've had counties that have updated their um, precinct lines, and we adhered to the 2010 precinct lines. So the reports that we run is really looking at what was done in 2008 on the 2008 precincts, even though we put them together. So with less than 50 precincts in the entire state were split. Compactness. If you will look now, to explain compactness on this, you must understand that one is the perfect compact district. So the closer you get to one, the better the number is, okay? The average compactness indicator in 2002 was 0.16. The courts were at 0.27. Our map, 0.27. The low, in other words, the least compact district in the plan, in 2002 was 0.03. I haven't figured out if that was the 16th or the 24th district. If you remember, those districts ran across the state like this, but it was probably one of those. In 2004, the court's lowest was 0.10. This plan, the least compact, is 0.11. The most compact district. In 2002, the plan was 0.34. 2004 was 0.55. The most compact district in this map by mathematical calculations is 0.62. So when we talk about what the court plan, our plan, I think it's safe to say that we took what the courts gave us and improved upon it. Treatment of incumbents. In 2002, there were 12 members of the Senate that were paired. Ten of those were of the Republican Party. When the courts drew the plan in 2004, 21 incumbents were paired. This plan only pairs two members of the Senate. Incumbent core, this is the amount of district that stays within the district going from um, the districts in 2010 to 2012. And while it was not one of our principles that we adopted, it was one thing to look at that I thought was important for us to consider. The average incumbent district that was kept intact from 2010 to 2000, we will run in 2012, was 58.2 percent. This plan, the average is 76.2. In other words, I, can, I believe that the people of Georgia, when they go to vote in 2012, will have less confusion about who their state senator will be than even what was happened in 2002 plan. We don't have a number for the incumbent core on the court plan and probably would be impossible to, to adhere to because the unconstitutional map that was passed by the Senate at that point in time, you remember, had those little run districts that were very hard to do. That is the stats on this plan that the members of the Senate working together put together. And that is the plan of which I give to this committee for consideration today. We have those that have, that have um, recognized to be speak uh, to speak. So I want to. I don't want to belabor the point in, in the public that came here to speak. And we'll call the members. No, no, no. I'm the chairman of the committee. I will recognize. We're going to let the public speak because I don't know if we have members that came here on their lunch hour. We're going to let the public speak, and there'll be time for us to deliberate. Well, Ed Painter, please come to speak. I'm, I'm Ed Painter from Dalton. Uh, I'm part of a citizens advocacy group we call Northwest Georgia for the Northwest Georgians. I realize that y'all are not uh, talking about congressional districts today, but when I saw that y'all 
had this on the calendar. I didn't want to miss the opportunity to make you familiar with it. Uh, we are attempting to comprise a district in Northwest Georgia, whether it's called the 9th or the 14th or whatever, that consists of 13 counties, and I am going to be brief. I, uh, we didn't have enough handouts, but we will be back to talk to everyone. Uh, it, is, it comprises 13 counties of the 15-county Northwest Georgia Regional Commission. It has been determined that that is an area of interest by the uh, community interest by the state already. The numbers in these 13 counties only exceed the requirement by 138 residents. It is compact. It meets every criteria that y'all have been discussing. We'll probably score very high on your points. And to be brief, I won't, I won't go over this because I know y'all have other matters to discuss, but we feel that this provides an opportunity for y'all as legislators to make a statement about how you're going to do the congressional redistricting. We all know how it's been done in the past. This time, uh, the uniqueness of the fact that we have to do massive redistricting and that uh, three par the party controls all three branches provides an opportunity for the first time for citizens to actually try to form a district. And unless I have hear anything else, I've not heard one objection to it other than political. To protect a congressman or to a uh, party doesn't want uh, leaders of their district changed, something like this. We did not take this in consideration. The map speaks for itself. And this did start at the Dalton public hearing that y'all had when uh, County Board of Commissioner Chairman Mike Babb spoke about the district running north and south instead of east and west. I had been to a redistricting workshop just to learn the process. I appreciate how difficult a job y'all have been going through with this. I really do. And uh, I, I want you to know that uh, those of us who have looked at it seriously realize that y'all have taken on a tremendously difficult job and appears the House and the Senate have both done uh, great work on it. Uh, hopefully you'll do the same thing in the congressional district. We see no reason not to start off with uh, with this this district. It'll, it'll help build trust in whatever you have to do as you go through the redistricting process in the majority minority districts uh, and realize that you're going to have to do things that don't look real pretty uh, to comply with the law. So I want to thank you for the opportunity to take a few minutes of your time and speak. And if there are any questions, I'll be glad to answer them now. If not, we'll be We're back. really here to talk about SIM Prop 1, the yes, Senate sir. District. So I, I appreciate so the comments, and we'll, we'll keep this in, the com in everybody's committee so when we do take up congressional, yes, sir. Thank you committee for your time. to consider. Sharon Blackwood. Hello, thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, I am from Gwinnett County and I live in Duluth and I'm just an ordinary citizen. And this process is very confusing to me. I don't understand why we can't have a non-political process to do this. I'm looking at Gwinnett County. I don't, I don't have a comparison of what it is right now but we're divided up into eight Senate districts in Gwinnett County. And that seems like a lot to me for, for our, our community in Gwinnett to be split up like that. And it also looks like the south eastern part of the, part of the county is the one that is so split. And that the north, I mean the southwest, and that the north and west are held together much better. And I was wondering why this was done, um, why the rules were changed so we don't have as much time to study these numbers and, and study what has happened. Um, and the release of the maps being so late, it's, it's, it's just very confusing for the ordinary citizen. Are there any questions? Any, uh, any responses to why, why it was well, done like this? I will say that in that I made a commitment that we would release the maps for the public to look at. We did release them on Friday, and it gave the public opportunity to, Kemp to comment on them. Um, and um, that is unprecedented in Georgia. I mean, what we have done is, is unprecedented in giving uh, the product out there for scrutiny. Mm -hmm. When it comes to how counties are 
um, divided, as I said, that through public input that we had in the public hearings and through working with mm -hmm. members of the Senate that came in and talked about what was important and for our requirement to adhere to the law, mm -hmm. both the Constitution of One Person, One Vote and the Voting Rights Act, all that is the product of the districts as they became. Are there any, how many majority, minority districts are there in the Senate in Gwinnett County? Because it is a primarily majority minority um, uh, county now. That's not true. Well, but that's true. There's two. But mm -hmm. thank you for what your you comments. Mean? We have others to speak. Thank you. Deborah Jones, Baysmore. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity. And as was said, my name is Deborah Jones Baysmore, and I am a, the president of the Homeowners Association in my area. I actually sit on several different committees in the community, and as a result, there have been a number of members that have come out to the different hearings and they have made their objections on record to the redistricting and the drawing of the line in District 35, where Senator Donzella James represents us. We are currently an undeveloped urban and rural area. Under the leadership of Senator Donzella James, we were looking forward to more development in our area. She represents us. She is at the grassroots. She shakes our hands. She talks to us. She understands us. She built that area up. We're family. We are a family. Now you're talking about bringing someone in who does not live in the area, who does not pay taxes in the area, does not know us. We don't know them. And I, I, it, I just don't understand why you would try to break up a family. Because my understanding is that the state and the nation core is family. And, and this is what you're doing right now. And not only that, she has worked hard to bring forth different committees, to, to bring different businesses in our area, just to speak to the people and find out exactly what is needed and that's the direction she goes and we understand that she had an excess number of individuals in her district and needed to give some up so we were prepared that some of us may not be represented by her any longer however when we found out about the maps and how they were drawn she is totally she is totally lost everything that she's worked for everything so she doesn't represent any of us anymore this is devastating to our community and i don't know how we're going to function from this point forward and since you have decided to take her away we're asking that at least give us someone comparable but we really do not want Senator Donzella James to leave our district and she has lost World Changer Church and other large constituents that are very very concerned thank you very much for your there any questions wait, 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 wait. Let me make Sorry, sure I get the microphone on I'm trying speak real close and see if there yeah, I think it's on. And what part of the district do you live in? I live, I live in the 35th district. Okay, and, do you know, like, and I live off of Old National on Beseda Road. Old National on the South Park. Mm -hmm. So, would you say that that area has a good community of interest with the area around where Donzella lives and the part north of there? Most definitely. Yes. Most definitely. We meet on a regular basis also, committees, and we discuss. There are um, entities from different areas like code enforcement, police, um, economic development, all different areas come together on a regular basis once a month 
to, and she formulated that committee and so that we could come together and discuss what area, what concerns and what issues we have in our community and work together as a whole to rectify. And, and you understand yeah, cer I certain things well. outside of any one person's ability to change, you know, districts change, they affect districts next door. So any one thing may be outside of a person's ability to change. But you would say that the parts of Fulton County in the south west part of our district that have been moved out would would be part of Fulton County and have more in common with her district than areas of the 28th district? Most definitely. Thank you. Most definitely. Any other questions? Um, Ms. Ms. Baysmore, yes. um, what's your occupation? Right now I'm a, considered a disabled retiree and I work very hard in the community on different committees and helping our community. Love Do you it. assist in any way with anybody at the Capitol? I do. And who's that you work with? Senator Donzella James. Thank you very much. Yes. I volunteer. William Perry. I'm not a paid I'm, employee. <laughs> William William Perry, common call. Sure, Mr. Bartell, I apologize. Um, I will, Mr. Al Bartell. Then I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I I don't think it was yours to yield. I mean, I I accidentally skipped over Mr. Bartell, so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry for again. that. Good to see you again. Now, see, I've checked William off, so make sure that I don't mess up on getting back to, to you. All right. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee, my name is Al Bartell. I'm a West Atlanta resident, and I rise to speak on the issue of equity in governance. It is crystal clear in your comments that you have received uh, countless hours of work and information from the 56 senators in the state of Georgia. But it is not clear to the neighborhood leaders, community leaders, faith leaders, and small business leaders that their input has been made available in this august process. So we have concerns. One of our major concerns is that the access to public policy in Georgia seems to be slanted toward lobbyists, special interest groups, and corporations. It is the concern of neighborhood leaders, community leaders, faith leaders, and small business leaders that lobbyists, special interest groups, and corporations have the capacity to look at maps on Friday and within a few hours come up with reliable solutions, reliable intentions, and reliable recommendations. To the average neighborhood leader, community leader, faith leader, and small business leader, that capacity does not exist. With all due respect to your honest, reliable intention to make the maps available on Friday, we applaud that. As such, there is currently no reliable public engagement strategy that can include the engagement of the almost 9 million citizens in the state of Georgia. It is that reference point that I speak to the concern and how the august members of this committee address that concern. For many years, local, state, and federal governments have worked in partnership with faith-based and community organizations, and these collaborations have played a critical role in the lives of residents in providing services to neighborhoods and communities. Public engagement strategies, including administrative, technical, and community engagement initiatives, have been used to address issues, solutions, and problems that impact the welfare and quality of life for citizens. Currently, in our experience as neighborhood, community, faith, and small business leaders, there is no comprehensive public engagement strategy that has general acceptance and alignment from a majority of different stakeholders. In the past decade, the state of Georgia has had increased services to local needed citizens. However, a strategy to help integrate efforts and align resources for public engagement strategies seem to be non-existent. A public engagement strategy plan will develop, plan, evaluate, and analyze opportunities for massive citizens' participation. 
It is the concern of neighborhood leaders, community leaders, faith leaders, and small business leaders that the absence of a reliable public engagement strategy in this reapportionment process will set us back as a state, will decrease our capacity to compete in the southeast region of the nation, will impact our relationship to government funding, and will decrease the mandate that we have as citizens of being a reliable part of the process. So we ask this committee between now and January to re-look at a public engagement strategy to address the concerns of civic participation. Many of us are clear that the requirements for Justice Department and courts and the technical aspect of minority-based districts have seemingly been addressed. But the outcome of people being changed from one senator to another, the outcome of the disproportionate stacking in Fulton County of people who are not familiar with the quality of the representation that's been assigned to them may not violate the technical accountability, and I in no way suggest that it does, but the relationship to citizens' participation will be decreased substantially by that technical, reliable strategy that has been designed and delivered. So we ask you to reconsider it. My name is Al Bartell, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak, Mr. Chairman. Are there any questions? It would be good if all the people could say where they live, Mr. Chairman. I, if you don't mind. Uh, I, um, the, the, the senator is absolutely correct. I should have instructed everybody, please give their name and where they live. And um, so we have a record with that. So you're absolutely 100% correct. Um, let's see, Mr. Painter said where he lived. Uh, did uh, Sharon Blackwood, did you state? Sharon Blackwood from Duluth, Georgia, Gwinnett County. And and um, and Deborah spoke where she's from, and so Mr. Bartell. Are there any questions, Senator Fort? Did I get it. Yep. Yes, sir. Mr. Bartell, thank you for coming by to be with us this afternoon. Um, are you saying that the release of the maps at 12:30? or sometime thereafter, because I don't know if they were released. I know the chairman will correct me, but are you saying that the release of the maps on Friday afternoon um, and then the bill coming before the committee, that in the intervening time, in, and I know the, the, the map that I saw at that time did not have precincts, did not have streets, did not have any of that data. Are you saying that that process, that time frame did not allow for you uh, and other citizens to be able to uh, understand uh, where districts were drawn? The time frame definitely did not work for the citizens, but even more substantial, the amount of technical design that needs to be communicated to the public in natural, everyday language is missing. The administrative accountability for input, there was no process outlined for the public to communicate that. And it is in our experience that lobbyists, special interest groups, and corporations have the wherewithal to do that. But Senator Ford, the everyday citizen does not, has not, and in the current process that's been designed, it is clear that we will not have that opportunity, and we're requesting that this committee redesign the public engagement strategy for this process. May I follow up, Mr. Chair? Um, you, you live in West Atlanta, you I, told us. I do. Um, do you believe that West Atlanta uh, in Fulton County has a community of interest with the 28th District, with Coyota County? It has been our experience in West Atlanta that one of the counties that seem to express their displeasure with the communities of West Atlanta 
and real loud, particularly in this transportation initiative, is Coweta County. Coweta County in particular came out against the transportation initiative that is so badly needed for the residents in West Atlanta. The jobs are in the northern part of Metro. The only way to get there is through transportation. And Coweta County in particular came out against that. And I, I want to be sure, Mr. Bartell, I'm hearing what you're saying. You're saying that the community of interest of a Coweta County is adverse to the kind of interest of the community that you live in. Is that true? In, our, in my our opinion, it is severely adverse to Thank the you. community that we live in. Thank you. Any other questions? I will, Mr. Bartell, I will say this, that we um, received the census data in April. Um, we've had 12 public hearings. Um, we posted on the website the ability for anybody to go and to put in comments for consideration. Individuals could go speak with their individual senators to make sure that the senators came to speak with me about any considerations and concerns. Um, and on Friday, when we posted the map that went up there, um, it, the, the, the ability was to access a map that even got to block census data. So there was as much data available for individuals uh, to access. I will say this. I'm going to say this. I'm sure this is going to be a discussion at some point in time, but I will just say since we want to target um, what we're talking about in this area right here, um, Mr. Bartell, when we uh, follow up with what Senator Fort was talking about, communities of interest, I want to make it very clear. Communities in of interest are what we call aspirational principles. We have to do legal things, and then there are things that we like to do which are not legal. Communities of interest are things that we look and consider between. And I don't know what the thing is, but I, I sat with the senator from the 35th, and one of the priorities the senator of the 35th gave me and what she wanted to consider was to shed this area from her district. She was overpopulated in her district, and she said she wanted to shed, shed this area. Now, as the chairman, Senator, Senator, you're not a member of this committee, and you're out of order. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. And so, as the chair of this committee, I understood that this process would require many members of the Senate to have to lose areas and to gain new areas. And so I did not make myself immune to that process. The senator from the 30th came to me, which is over in this area right here, and he asked to have more of his home county returned to him. And so I could accommodate by giving the senator from the 30th more of his home county, of which we share the county. And so I gave more of his home county because I had another senator in working together that said, she wanted to shed these voters. And so by meeting the two needs of individuals other senators, that's what left my district where it was. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. William Perry, I didn't, didn't mess up on that one. And I, I apologize again on sure. skipping that. I just, but thank you for, for that. Right. Mr. Perry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is William Perry with Common Cause Georgia and also representing the uh, Georgia Redistricting Alliance. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm sure at this point some of you may be thinking that we'd kind of just like to get rid of this mess, that uh, on both sides there's, there's partisan bickering, there's um, uh, senators protecting their districts. Um, throughout the 12 hearing process, the Georgia Redistricting Alliance offered five principles in which we would like to see districts drawn. Um, I can give you a positive nod and, and thank you all for adhering to four out of five of the principles that we came up with. Um, the kind of missing piece, I think, in our, our fifth principle was not considering incumbency or political parties when drawing the maps. So unfortunately, the most what we feel is the important piece was left out, but we do recognize that this is a pr political process. Um, we would like to see um, in the future, now that both parties have had the opportunity to uh, draw maps after a census, to allow the citizens to do it. I think uh, Senator Chance here to my left in 2007 uh, sponsored 
a uh, independent redistricting commission uh, recommendation that came out of uh, Governor Purdue's task force. We hope uh, to work with you all in the near future to try to institute that for the 2020 census. Interest, uh, uh, excuse me, census. It seems both sides have supported it in the past, so we hope we can get both sides to again support it in the future. Um, throughout the process, and obviously today, there's been a lot of talk about transparency, and it's become real clear as I've watched the process that transparency tends to be in the eye of the beholder. How transparent is it? Um, admittedly, when the Democrats drew the maps in 2001, it was not done well. That, that bar was not high. So now that the Republicans are, have drawn the maps in 2011, that bar can easily be exceeded by just tripping over it because it's on the ground. It hasn't been raised. Um, certainly, you know, when we talk about transparency and we talk about the citizens' opportunity to participate in it, if you think about a citizen's committee, I don't think if there was a commission drawing the maps, we wouldn't see red signs on a door that say do not enter. We wouldn't see windows that are blacked out by curtains. We would see a more open and transparent process, and I think that would benefit us all. Um, it would also be great that the 12 uh, hearings around the state, um, and understandably, members of the committee nor members of the Senate offered explanations or answered questions because it was a citizen's opportunity to have their three minutes to share their thoughts. And as we get into this week, we're hopeful that we will kind of get the feedback from members of the Senate to know why districts were drawn in certain ways. And I appreciate, Mr. Chairman, you just taking a few minutes to explain and, and talk about the district that uh, preceded me. But we do hope that there is the opportunity, even if the answers are political or the reasons are political, that there will be some explanation as to why districts were drawn certain ways. We want to uh, invite you all to uh, have the opportunity to do that Thursday night. The Georgia Redistricting Alliance is holding a town hall meeting from 6.30 to 8.30 where we'll display the, com the uh, uh, proposed maps, give citizens the opportunity in the evening to review those maps, and then have about an hour and a half to two hours so that people can make their comments. We'd like to invite you all to that. We'll send you the information as soon as we can, but uh, have you come out and provide some of the answers to the questions that don't have the opportunity to get answered in some of these forums. Again, I thank you for your time. I do thank you for meeting four of our five principals, and I would be glad to answer any questions. Are there questions? Senator Kowser. Senator Kowser. We appreciate you being here today. Yes, sir, uh, would you. you agree that the bar has now been raised given the maps that have been produced by the House and Senate this go round? I would think that the bar has been raised, but again, it didn't have to be raised real high to get raised or to exceed what happened. Would you tell in us, especially with the press and attendance, what are the four principles that you ask us to consider that we did in fact consider? Yes, the uh, compactness and uh, contiguity of the districts, that the um, geographic boundaries um, of uh, uh, geographic boundaries, counties, and cities be considered. Um, that the act um, uh, uh, meet the criteria of the Voting Rights Act, and that's three out of four, and the four going from memory. I'm sorry, Senator, I don't have a copy of them. Um, I will definitely make sure that that is uh, spoken loud and clear. And I just no, sir, that's the one that we failed on. I got one follow-up for you. Is I read something in the press where I think you were quoted, and I'm expecting you were misquoted, that the citizens of Rockdale County had come to meetings and asked that they be kept intact. Yes, and sir. in fact, they're split. Because in Athens, 10 or 12 citizens from Rockdale County came and asked us to please split them because they had different communities of interest in that county rural versus urban interest where you you were present at that meeting. I, I was referring to um, house districts uh, instead of Senate districts. The house districts did get split from four to six. You would agree with me that you were present at the meeting where Rockdale County citizens came in mass and asked that their Senate districts be they, they be represented by more than one senator to reflect the differing communities of interest in that county. I was at the Athens meeting. I don't specifically remember that. I did hear continually loud and clear to keep counties together. 
And Sir I apologize Ford. if I missed that particular comment. Okay, Mr. Perry. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming by this afternoon. I believe you said that the, the chair and the um, and I don't want to misquote you use the same guideline or four or five or some number of the guidelines that you all adopted as well. Is that correct? Met four or five of the principles, mm -hmm. yes, sir. When you say met, do, do you mean we adopted the guidelines or do you mean well, complied with the guidelines? Thank you for the opportunity to clarify, Or Senator. principles, rather. As far as we can tell so far, given the data that we've been able to analyze and spent the weekend looking over, it seems that there are four of the five that are met. I follow yes, up. Now, yeah. and I, I want to be clear on this because you have done your analysis. Have you done your analysis based on retrogression on in the 14th, the 23rd, and the 25th? We have not completed our analysis. Okay, yet. so at this point, the comp meeting the guidelines or principles, you have not finished your analysis. And the, the most you could probably say at this point that with an incomplete analysis, you they may have met. Yes, sir. Thank you for uh, the clarification. We feel that they have, um, as far as we've analyzed so far, met four of the five principles. Thank you. Yes, sir. Senator Henson. Yeah. When you say met four or five principles, you mean in comparison to the previous map, you, you certainly, because we weren't able to get an uh, uh, amendment here, it, you would keep an open mind if we split less counties, split less precincts, uh, that there is certainly room to improve this, although this is an improvement from existing maps. Yes, sir. I, we would think because this was drawn in a political process where incumbency and political parties and their leanings were considered that, yes, sir, there's always room for improvement. Mr. Perry, you, you kept referring to the 2002 plan, and right now the districts that we have are, are what the court plan was in 2004. Um, in, would you agree in the, in the stats that I mentioned before that we have exceeded what the courts even did with regard to the principles that you that you cited yes sir thank you thank you very much appreciate it uh is this minister stephen muhammad okay Thank you, Mr. Chairman and the other members of this uh, august body. I appreciate the opportunity just to say a few words about my um, senator from the 35th District, uh, Senator Donzella James. I guess I'm sort of late. I probably should have spoke earlier because the map has been drawn, the, cat, the die has been cast, things are sort of the way they are. But I did owe what Mr. Uh, Bartell said in terms of there probably were some things that probably could have been done fair, and there's probably some things that I could have searched into and been a participant myself earlier on in the process. But I'm just here to make a point, even though I feel the die has been cast, that I would like for Senator Donzella James, you know, the district, those 42,000 that were removed, maybe some of them to be put back. I voted Ralph Bunch Middle School, uh, Cascade out on the other side of 285. My mosque, I am a Muslim, is on, Casca on Camelton near 285, one of the largest Muslim communities in the state of Georgia. And Senator Donjella James is someone that we're familiar with. We know her. She's a very ecumenical person who has reached out to us as part of her constituency to make sure that we feel welcome. And when you're a Muslim in America in these times, it's really very difficult. Uh, the majority, whites don't like you. Blacks don't like you. Asians don't like you. It's very difficult because everybody look at you as some kind of um, aberration. So it's very difficult to find someone that you can communicate with. And that's one of the things that our community has found that we could do with Sen Senator Donzella James. She has been very, very open in her efforts. And our history goes back, I think, in, in uh, 2003. She and I went on a peace mission with a group of Christian clergies to Israel. And uh, we spoke to the Knesset in 2000. I think that was 2003. And we spoke to the uh, Israeli Knesset. And when we were in there, as a Muslim, I was the first Muslim to be allowed to speak there. And when I spoke, 
I talked about how we should have one world and that there should be equality across the board. I said, I know what discrimination is like. I know what it's like uh, as a black person. I know what it's like as a Muslim and a black person. And black pe Christians don't want to deal with you. So I'm familiar with that. But I say that if we're going to have a peace in the world, which was our purpose for being there, we need to communicate and understand and allow people to work together with things that they have in common. And we have a lot in common with Senator Donzella James because she is a person that tries to understand. She's motherly. She has that motherly spirit that allows us in that district to communicate with her. The reason she has 42,000 more people because she's been pro-development. And the development, that's a neglected area of the state of Georgia and the city of Atlanta, that now we are growing just like the north side. That's part and a testament to her work in our district. So I would just like to say that, Senator James, I, I, I hope and pray to God that, you, uh, that things are rectified for you. I'm sorry I wasn't here for you earlier to uh, make my position and my points known. But we do feel that the state of Georgia, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I, probably, I wouldn't be caught dead in either party because I don't like the way they operate. I, I'm an independent. I, I'm, I'm probably, uh, maybe the Tea Party, maybe, but those two, oh, no, no, mm -mm. couldn't, couldn't go that route. So I'm an independent. I vote Republican. I vote Democratic. I vote for whoever's best in my interest. And as you know, in 2000, what was that, two? 2002, yes, yeah, it was 2002 or 2000, most Muslims voted for George Bush because we felt that he would be a, a better candidate. That's, that's the majority of Muslims in America voted for George Bush. So... It's that sort of thing is that we're independent and we vote for Senator Donzella James and we try to vote our interests. So I would just like to say that, Don Senator, uh, sorry I wasn't here earlier. And uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for, for allowing me to say a few words. I'm nervous for being here. Any questions? Thank you. Senator Donzella James. Mr. Chairman, members of this committee, I respected your uh, laws and that if we had questions or comments about our districts that we needed to come before, uh, come to the meetings. I attended four of them around the state and I had as you pointed out, Ms. Baysmore volunteers for me and spends her own money and time. Well, I have 40 ambassadors who give time and effort. I have a district office on Old National Highway, which will not be in my district anymore. So, you know, I could, could have, I didn't ask her to come up here. She came up on her own. But I attended those meetings, and at those meetings, I had members at each one of your meetings around the state that traveled to whatever area it was to speak on behalf of keeping a solid community of interest when we get rid of our 40,000 overage that we had, not to take us out. I met with you when you emailed us and invited us to come. As soon as you did, even though I'm one of those people, as you, you commented, that you made this available to and those people didn't, did not uh, take uh, advantage of it. But I did. And then I came back again. I was never shown anything about Chattahoochee Hills. In fact, I, we, did not, we did not discuss me losing Chattahoochee Hills. You see... During my first tenure in office, the 10 years that I served, one piece of legislation that I was able to pass uh, actually created the Chattahoochee Hills, uh, Cerebi, and the um, rural integrity of that area to contain and to be contained and to stay rural. 
and I worked with uh, our former governor, who was a senator at that time, Purdue, and he was the second signer, and we worked hard for that. I live only five miles from Chattahoochee Hills, so it's not just in my district. It's in my neighborhood. I visit that area. I go to the wildlife uh, consortium. I'm there. I did not ask to lose Chattahoochee Hills, so we must have been in two different meetings because either it, either that or you did seem very distracted and you were doing things and didn't pay me any attention when we were talking in the meeting. But in the first meeting where you asked me, what do you want to keep and what do you want to lose? And I said, well, I don't want to lose anything. And I didn't ever say what I would get rid of. I just said, I want to keep the airport, which you got rid of. I want to keep Atlanta, which I don't have in there. I want to keep Hateville. Is not in there. I want to keep uh, College Park, where I live in College Park, I, and none of the city of College Park is in, in the third in this new district. I want to keep uh, East Point. None of East Point is in there. So I mean, my entire base, the Fulton County portion, is gone. I got moved, even though I had to lose some, a few, a lot. I got moved into another district because. I got cherry picked all over the place. And again, I, I don't want to call you a bald faced lie, but I did not say that I wanted to get rid of Chattahoochee Hill, Mr. Chairman, and which you still not paying me any attention. Uh, oh, also, I'm, I'm also Mr. Mr. Chairman, I want to know uh, why is it that you said that we could, we could talk to you and possibly um, you would try to consider, I guess consider means you just listen, but you consider keeping some of this. But every single thing that I ask for is what got taken out of my district. Rather, So none of the things that I asked for were kept. I do have witnesses because in my first meeting, Dr. Isai Ambo, Mr. Uh, Leroy White, and uh, Mr. John Ross, Mark Bell came in with me. So they know what we said in that first meeting. Uh, in the second meeting, where you showed me a map that did not have Chattahoochee Hills in your district, I came in. You would not allow me to bring anybody in with me. I had Miss Melissa Prescott, who had been working with me for six weeks on a map. You, you did not allow her to come in. You made her sit out in the lobby. So when I came in, you showed me, you hand me one map, and then you looked and saw it wasn't the 35th, and you took it away, and you said, I got to find it, and you looked through papers, and you found the map, and you showed it to me. And then you told me I had to sign off on it, so I felt like I was being threatened. I was told, you got to sign off on it uh, right now if you want to at least keep this. And, and it did not look like this. This is a lot worse. It was bad enough. And I said, I can't sign off on something that takes away my strongest base. Can, is there any way that we could make some changes? And you said, no. And if you don't sign off on it, then the next person that comes in will ask for it, and I'll give it to them. So I said, oh, so you can give them something, but you can't give me something. I didn't understand that rationale. Did that mean that Democrat or black woman or whatever can't? ask for something else, but somebody else, another senator who's duly elected as I am, could come in. So I had a, I had a, I had a concern about that. And then you said, okay, well, we, we can't come to any decision if you're not signing it. In other words, get out of my office. So I did leave at that point. And I thought I was very, uh, I'm, I'm loud now because I'm emotional about this. Because I, res I thought, I don't know why. But I thought that this was going to be a fair, fair process, and it was not. It moves everything out of my district in order to make room for other people who, who don't even live close to the 35th, who don't live in Fulton County, who don't care anything about it, who don't pay taxes, who don't even have a clue what goes on in Fulton County, to come in and be in Fulton County just to be on the delegation. That's wrong. I know you're not going to change anything, but I wanted for the record to state that this, this senator has been shafted. That's what I want.
That's what I want. Senator Ford. Yeah. Uh, Senator James, yes, has sir. anybody explained to you which of the committee's principles that were adopted, has anybody explained to you to this very hour what principles necessitated uh, what has happened to your district and the bringing of the 20th, 28th into the uh, into Fulton County? Has anybody explained which principles that uh, necessitated uh, this happening to your district and to Fulton County? No, sir. The only thing that was expressed to me is that you have to lose some of your people and we have to look at the Voting Rights Act. And since uh, the people who boarded me uh, had lost uh, some of the district and they happened to be a part of the, uh, they would have been, uh, their district would have been looked at within the Voting Rights Act. Some of those seats had to go, and I knew that. I understood that. And I didn't mind. I mean, I knew I had to lose some. But why they did it this particular way? No. I don't, I was not told that. And that's why I am here before your committee, because I felt that your committee is the one that could answer my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Senator Hanson. Uh, I have a couple questions, but I might uh, be part of that conversation you all had, and I want to make it clear. It was never your intent or purpose to have these conversations one-on-one -on -one to restrict senators from commenting on it or to try to put it in the confidential arena that Senate rules say private conversations are confidential. So you, you don't have any reservation about senators discussing these conversations that I continue and I ask a couple questions. Um, Senator, I will be more than happy to um, tell the members that are in this room mm -hmm. and everybody else how that conversation went. No, but in general, though, uh, you don't have any she, idea well, to restrict any. You know, of usually, usually members of the Senate use discretion and private conversations amongst ourselves, and um, but it's already out there, so we'll I will talk about it. And all those do you other, have any questions? And all those other conversations, I do have. Um, Senator, when you uh, had these discussions and you were brought information and, and then told if you didn't sign off on it, it may be given away to somebody else, uh, did you feel like you were really having a give and take where, you know, you were looking at areas and he was telling you what was happening in neighboring districts and, and kind of giving you directions that maybe only the, the, the people intimately involved with the process might have, you know, where districts are going to have to move for population reasons? Was he really, do you think there was a give and take and a real dialogue? Absolutely not. It was just me listening to, looking at the map and whether I agree with it or not, this is it. I don't need your vote anyway. And as far as me talking about what happened in that meeting, I know there's two sides to every story, but I have no reason to lie. I am coming here uh, because I didn't make this a public record that we, what we talked about. On the news today, you said that I w wanted to give up Chattahoochee Hills, and that is a lie. We didn't even talk about it. I never talked about it. You never asked me, and you never showed me anything about it. So for you to put it on the news, you opened this up, not me. I, like I said, I came humbly before you, and I tried to talk to you. I am, I am a diplomatic person. And I tried to come in there and speak with you. I'm a professional person, and I tried to do that. Again, I'm emotional today because I cannot believe that you could say that on the news. And also, I've been treated the way I've been treated. As the person who worked hard for a strong community of interest. And we built that. So why does it have to be torn apart? And, Senator, I will say that as a um, principle I use in chairing a committee, I let the committee members ask their questions, and as soon as the committee members have asked their questions, I'll be more than happy to answer yours. Senator Ford. Thank you. All right. And, uh, Senator James, when you went in to converse about your district, at any time were you told that you needed to either sign on to your district or the next person through the door who signed on might in fact get priority over what you were 
asking for. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Um, I hope that y'all can change this district or accept an uh, well, wait, amendment, wait, I, I'm, Mr. I'm, Chairman. Senator, you know, for you to come here and call me a liar. No, you, and then, you, you and lied. Then, I mean, well, Senator, okay, you, well, you, you, let's you, get another word for it. It's an untruth. Because we had a meeting on May the 9th. Yes. And what you call possibly looking distracted was me busily taking notes of your comments so that I would have those when you I You were getting up, walking around? And that's, that's taking no, notes? That's not. In the notes that I had, the priorities, when I asked you your priorities, I said, what are your priorities? We discussed about a lot of things. Here were your priorities. Keep my home precinct. Senator, did I keep your home precinct in this district? Did I? Did I keep your home precinct in the district? You know the answer to that. You just would you please, to for the record, would you say did I keep your home precinct in the district? Okay, but but I don't agree that that's all I said. I know I'm gonna go through all. I of said them. All, okay. I'm gonna go, go through ahead. all. Of yes. Them. Did you keep your home precinct? Your yes. home precinct. Okay. Yes. Keep uh, College Mr. Park. Chairman. Keep College Park. And your question is, why do you not still have College Park? Again, for the record, your district was how much overpopulated? And you were, you were right next to other districts that were underpopulated. And the senator from the 39th who wants to ask about the principles of our committee that were adhered to in drawing this district, I will inform him that the number one is one person, one vote, the Constitution. And so your I'm district aware. had to go, had to get to 172,994 as close as we could. And anything that deviated from that, we have, to, we have to be able to explain why we deviated from that population. So you didn't get to keep College Park. But unfortunately, there are other districts out here because I have to hear that the population, they had to take that. Keep Fairburn was your number three priority. Fairburn. Did you keep Fairburn? Yes. Number four, would like to shed Republican votes in South Fulton, Chattahoochee Hills. That's what you said in the meeting That's not that true. we had. That's not true. Why, that you wrote that down. Why would down, I write it down? I don't know. I did Senator, not tell you that. Senator, I never ever told you. Look, Senator, I've you been did. through uh, redistricting. Keep Union I know City. what to say and what not to say, and I knew that the Senator, only reason have, you had me in that meeting, in this, sir. Okay? We will Excuse be respectful me? and we'll have a certain yeah, amount but of But the only reason you had me in there was so you could write something down to take before the courts, and I understood that before I went in there. I am not stupid, even though you're keep, acting like a. Keep am. Union City. Did you, or did you keep Union City? Part of it. Okay. Keep Palmetto. Did you keep Palmetto? Yes. Right there. Your seventh one was keep Atlanta. You did have a precinct up here in Atlanta, of which, did you keep that? I didn't see a precinct in Atlanta. I have a half a precinct in Atlanta. We had a half precinct. But the population <laughs> requirements of other districts is the reason that we had to take that one. Well, I drew there. it and, and. Keep uh, Lithia Springs. Were you different. able to keep Lithia Springs? I see that. Okay. And then, of course, you wanted to keep unincorporated, unincorporated Fulton County. So, Senator, in taking in the meeting we had and coming up with the input that you gave me and in trying to be responsive to that, we had a subsequent meeting on August the 4th, of which I showed you this exact district. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. And I will go. I, 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 I'll well, go. Well, you can go you. wherever I because you didn't. I gave this to you. If you remember you our conversation, not. you were upset because you were losing the airport, and you said, "I want the airport, even if I could get the, the parking lot." Chattahoochee Hills airport. was in the district no, that you showed me. Don't try to and you district, gotta insult my intelligence and, and tell me that, Senator. I believe you're insulting mine. And no, my you're integrity. insulting my and my integrity. And also, Senator, I will say that when you look at your district in redistricting, the core percent of your district that was kept intact is 80.36 percent. I mean, you had to give up something, but at least you kept 80.36 80, 80 percent. You are above average of all the other senators in what has happened in that. You have given me Douglas County where these people are not going to, would not ever vote for a person that looked like me. I got to go over there and talk to them, meet them, work hard and hope that I can get a vote 
a, a block, every, every precinct. You push me out of my solid base into another district, and you're trying to tell me that 80% of my district is intact. You haven't given me time to study that. I don't believe it. But either way, I asked you for certain things, and you didn't give it to me. You gave me something else. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gail Davenport. Senator Gail Davenport. We're trying to get the public comment in. We got people who want to speak, and I'm trying to get to that. I apologize. If anybody wants to speak, please sign up out there. We're, I know some people tried to came, come through lunch, and we're trying to we're trying to get to that. Senator Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, but just have a few quick uh, comments. I represent portions of Clayton County and portions of Henry County, and I attended a couple of the um, uh, hearings, uh, and that was one in my district down in Henry County, the city of Stockbridge. Uh, but I am really concerned about the county delegation. In Henry County, there were two Democratic senators and one Republican, and now with the map drawn, uh, there will be only one. And what the committee has done is actually taken me out of the entire Henry County area, where I had two, four, six precincts there. So the total Henry County, and I, I know the committee is just not dealing with just me and my issues, but, uh, but that's really where I have uh, friends and relatives and my supporters are there. So you've taken the whole area of Henry County and you've given me uh, DeKalb County over in another area. Uh, so my concern really is if you all would uh, consider the county delegation. I'm not accusing the committee of, uh, of uh, diluting the Democratic uh, a vote there with two Democratic senators and one, but not only Henry County, when I looked at the map and saw Fulton County, it seems to be doing the same thing or even worse. So I just asked the committee to look at that. Now, I grew up in Jonesboro, that's where I live, uh, but I attended school over in Forest Park, and all I asked the committee to do was, uh, uh, in my meeting, was if I could just keep uh, uh, Henry County and Clayton County, the precincts I had, and just give me 3,000 more voters. Uh, but the whole area of Forest Park, all the precincts uh, uh, have been taken from me, the whole area there. And uh, my one Riverdale precinct, where I have relatives and friends, and then I live in Jonesboro, so you taken uh, for those precincts, you gave me another precinct of Jonesboro, but you moved that whole area down, and I'm asking the committee to reconsider and give me the, that district back, the part of Clayton County where my base is. Uh, uh, have the faith community there. Uh, I'm a United Methodist, but over in Forest Park, I uh, attend the churches, the Baptists, uh, the Church of God in Christ, all of them. And so I just asked the committee uh, to revisit this. Uh, and uh, 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 I guess I might sound a little uh, like it's personal to me, but uh, ask that you just give me those areas back. Thank you very Any much. Any questions? Thank you. Senator Ford. Senator, who are the two Democratic senators you're referring to? Oh, I represent, uh, oh, in Henry County? Uh, Senator, uh, I'm one, and then Senator Emanuel Jones. He represents um, the city of McDonough further down where his dealership is and where his church is. That's the area. But I think under this map, that portion might be taken because he lives up the... the I understand, I understand. Two African American senators. Yes, two African American senators and one Republican. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, Dr. Marcus Davis. I 
sorry, and we're doing what we can to get the public opportunity to speak. Lynn Brown? Lynn Brown? Okay. Yes, technically it's afternoon. I'm Lynn Brown. I'm from Rock. Oh, I represent. Oh, in Henry County, uh, Senator. I'm one, and then Senator Emanuel Jones. He represents um, the city of McDonough, further down where his dealership is and where his church is. That's the area. But I think under this map, that portion might be taken because he lives up. The, the I understand. Understand, two African American senators. Yes, two African American senators and one Republican. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, um, Dr. Marcus Davis. I, sorry, and we're doing what we can to get the public opportunity to speak. Lynn Brown. Lynn Brown? Okay. I guess technically it's afternoon. I'm Lynn Brown. I'm from Rockdale County, so if y'all have any questions about Rockdale County, I'm your go-to person. If I don't know it, I can get back with you. Uh, first off, I want to thank you all for having the open and well-advertised hearings and citizen input. It's not as it was in the past. I was born and raised in Georgia. I've been in business with my husband since I was 17. I'm fixing to be 56, so we've been around hard times in business. I'm a bookkeeper and I'm a paralegal. I understand documentation, I understand data. I understand evidence that you need to have for court. You listened to us and we presented evidence and we presented photographs. And we didn't just give you our wishes and our emotions. We gave you facts and documents to be able to make an informed and educated decision. Uh, we went from Rockdale County up to Athens. It's a 35-mile one-way trip. Several of us went up there. It was important for us to go to see the process and to have our input. You opened the door, and I walked right through it. I'm bossy. You open that door, I walk through it. You will never say you misunderstand a thing I'm saying. You may not like what I'm saying, but I will defend my opinions to you, and we can have a civilized give and take. But don't think I'll ever back down because I'm female. I won't. So we you must like Tom Petty's song, I, I'll, I Won't Back Down, right? Oh, you bet you. <laughs> Highway to you know where and stuff like that, yeah. Uh, we also uh, had a good showing in Stockbridge on June 14th. Uh, I appreciate what y'all did aligning my county as we requested with Newton County, which is a like-type rural area. We gave evidence that, according even to the county documents, Rockdale County is almost 60% still rural agricultural. It is not an urban area. We have had and still have two state senators. We have the 43rd and the 17th. One of our senators is very open and comes to different meetings when invited or even not invited if it's simply advertised. One kind of stays away. Uh, when he did finally show up and Mr. Perry was at this meeting and he was speaking of Rockdale, so again, I can tell you what was said about Rockdale County. I was there. I probably said it. We were finally told because we some did question him of why he would never show up during the previous election cycle for debates. Later on, we were told we were rude and he would not come back to Rockdale County. This map, the way it is drawn, will now make that senator make sure he has to come back to Rockdale County. 
and talk to us and have our input. All we want is a voice. And again, we don't expect everyone to agree with us, but we do expect you to do your best to represent us. And we do expect for you not to just take it a given because we have been gerrymandered into your district by a heavier populated urban area. Uh, I do again want to thank y'all. And in closing, I'll just put it in a little sim simple country terms. I was a city girl, born and raised in Atlanta, married a country boy in Rockdale County. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. There's going to be some folks, you could have advertised this 24 hours a day, seven days a week with all the news media, and still some folks would never take the opportunity to get the information. I called Senator Seaball's office several times. Judy gave me the information I needed. If she didn't know it readily, she would call me back within 24 hours. I didn't have to go on the internet. All I had to do was pick up the telephone and ask. You can't get any better than that. People have to be responsible for themselves. I'm a big girl. I don't need a babysitter. I don't need a nanny. I just need to be given an opportunity. And I just wanted to thank you for taking the time and how this was handled this time. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you, sir. And um, ladies. Alicia Morgan. I have an elephant pit. I also have a donkey and out in my pasture. I have some cows and jackasses, too. Careful, you might put you in one of the cows. Oh, hi. I don't know how to follow that. Go right ahead, Alicia. Um, it's a lot going on in here this afternoon. Um, good afternoon. I'm Alicia Morgan, and I'm here as a citizen today um, to express my concern about Senate District 6, uh, which is Cobb County. Um, I will say uh, I am also a state legislator. Um, I've served uh, in Cobb County in, for, for the last nine years, and just from a historical perspective, uh, was the first African-American elected from Cobb County. Um, and the reason I'm concerned about Senate District 6 in particular is that uh, the way that the proposed map is, we have now a Fulton County Senator who would be representing our area. And that's of concern to me for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, there's an issue of communities of interest. Um, in the South Cobb area in particular, we, are, we have recently embarked, embarked upon a significant uh, redevelopment effort. Uh, with the, in partnership with my current senator, who is Doug Stoner, who is from Cobb County. Um, he, we passed a bill just this past session uh, that recreates the South Cobb Redevelopment Authority. And I'm concerned that with, it, with these drastic changes, um, that it will do great harm to the efforts that we have uh, put together in terms of redeveloping South Cobb. And in particular, because we have put together both a bipartisan um, and multiracial uh, effort within South Cobb to redevelop our area and to um, work on several issues, I, I believe that the current proposed map will do great damage to that. I'm also concerned in looking at the numbers um, in terms of the diversity of the district. Uh, currently, in, in the current District 6, uh, Senate 6 district, there are 38 uh, percent African Americans. And under this proposed map, it goes to, I believe, 68 percent. So it seems that there's a, a bit of packing going on. Um, and one of the things that I'm proud of in living in Cobb County, and particularly in the area that I do, is that we are a diverse community. Um, and that we have, yes, both Democrats and Republicans and uh, white people and black people and Latinos and a very diverse community in which we've been able to forge strong relationships to move our community forward. And so I'm really concerned that if we have a, a senator, whoever it is, and it's nothing personal to the, the current senator, um, who is not from our area, who does not understand the dynamics of the community, who does not have the relationships and the abilities to help us move forward in this redevelopment effort, that those things will be harmed. And then lastly, I will say in terms of population, we've had growth in our area, and I believe that we have the ability to have our own um, senator who lives in Cobb County who can represent the area. And from a historical perspective, uh, we currently have two African Americans who represent Cobb County, 
Um, and based on this new proposed map, that would stay at that number. We would not have the ability um, to, for, for this particular community to, to elect uh, candidates of our choice. Number one, because they would be living in Fulton County and the, the vast majority of the district would be in Fulton County. But number two, uh, because the numbers just don't allow that. And so I wanted to express those concerns again as a citizen. Um, I understand that this is a very challenging process uh, and it is about numbers, uh, but I do want to say that I think it would be in the best interest of, of my community that I live in and based on the coalitions that we've been able to forge uh, to, to take us to a place where we are able to elect um, a candidate of our choice and that we have adequate and fair representation uh, in the state Senate. Are there any questions? Senator Hanson. Yeah. So would you be fair to say that maybe 20 years ago it would have been different for a person of color like yourself to be elected to the state rep? Oh, absolutely. And it's fair to say that now that District 6, uh, being around 37 percent uh, African American and majority or right at total minority, is a district that's crossover that the minority population that district has a influence in that? Absolutely. Race? And we've been able to elect our candidate of choice. Um, and this is not about individual people, but in this case, we forged coalitions, again, Democrat, Republican, black and white, and we have the candidate of our choice. And I don't believe we'd be able to do that under this new district. And, you know, round reapportionment some, do you believe it would be possible to do a better job keeping that community of interest together so that in the future you can elect minority candidates or uh, definitely at least have the minority population impact and have a voice in who they want to represent? Absolutely, I believe that. Thank you. Any other questions? Okie dokie. Johnny Brown. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Johnny Brown, and I'm from Rockdale County. I want to thank y'all for having the meetings across the state. Y'all went to the four corners of this state so everybody would have an opportunity to come out and express their opinions and their desires for the redistricting. Anyone that says they didn't have access to the redistricting process was the two guys living under the rock on the Geico commercial because everybody else in, in this state had the opportunity to come speak with y'all. You gave Rockdale County the opportunity, and we took advantage of it. We came to Athens, and we came to Stockbridge. And the only reason we didn't come to the others was afraid y'all was about to get tired of hearing from us. I figured about it, if we went six or seven times, y'all would really ask us to stop coming. So, But we want to thank y'all. We ask y'all to align the north end of our county in the south end of our county with other counties such as uh, Henry, Newton, and Walton. So we would be with like, kind districts. And y'all did that for us. And the people of Rockdale County, thank y'all. And we appreciate what y'all have done for the state of Georgia. Thank you very much. Uh, he, he made the statement in, that North and South Rockdale are not, isn't it true that North, and South, North Rockdale is in the 43rd district, South Rockdale on the other hand is in the 17th district? So, so it's not quite accurate what you well, said, but I understand you, but you, you feel you were listened to. I feel I was listened to, Thank sir, you. yes there sir. You go. And as, as far as that map there, you made our senator in the 43rd district He's got to come see us, and not only does he have to come visit with us now, he's got to come down into Newton County and visit too if he's planning on getting reelected. And we want to thank you for that, sir. Senator Fort. Yeah, I have a question for, before you leave, sir. We use the term, quote unquote, like kind. Rural, sir. Okay. Rural, rural. Area. Okay, Farm that's land. what I'm glad I got that clarification, like okay. kind. Okay. Did you, follow up question, did you attend the meeting in Stockbridge? Yes, I did. Sir. Okay. And what did you, you, I believe at that meeting, you uh, gave an affiliation at that meeting. What was that affiliation? 
that I was the first vice chairman of the Rockdale Republican Party, sir. Okay. Thank and you. However, I am not speaking today as the first uh, vice chairman of the Rockdale Republican Party. I'm speaking as a citizen of Rockdale County. But you were then? I was then. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Any other questions? Thank you, Jim. All right. No other questions? Jim Nichols. And I have one other speaker signed up to speak. Um, so if anybody else wants to speak, please go sign up to speak or other than that, we will continue the committee business on this legislation. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the committee for the opportunity. I do apologize for looking like I was loading trucks all morning because um, I was. Uh, my name is Jim Nichols. I live in Stockbridge in Henry County. Um, I guess for full disclosure, I work for UPS. I have my teamster at Local 728. I ran for State Senate in District 17. I was a former chair of the Henry County Democrats, and I'm a student at GSU. I am not speaking on behalf of any of those parties. Um, I just wanted to speak um, from what I've observed. I have not been able to you know, look in depth at the different lines or the different things that you've done. Um, I know this, this process is a challenge, and um, it's one that you guys are probably all ready to get over with. But one thing I have not heard is uh, concerns about disparities of wealth. As someone that loads trucks, I watch a lot of my coworkers leave uh, at 8.30 or 9 in the morning and go on to second jobs, go on to trying to get their degrees, going on to try to raise their kids. Um, you don't have to live behind a rock uh, to have not been able to afford to drive to uh, some of these meetings. Uh, you don't have to live under a rock to not be able to um, take the time away when you're working two jobs or when you're trying to raise your kids. Uh, to participate in the process. Um, when I've listened to senators and elected officials speak in the media, I've heard nothing about the interests of the working class. I've heard nothing about different, different communities do have similar interests, but when I've listened to uh, the discussions taking place, I have never heard uh, concerns about uh, equity with, within uh, disparities of wealth. Because when, you know, when it comes down to it, uh, a lot of parties that have vested interests when that bell rings um, can afford to send 80 lobbyists down at the last minute. Um, I've got coworkers that can't afford to send their kids to summer camp. So I just wanted to speak my mind. Any thank questions? You. All right, thank you. Okay, our last speaker, Ron Davis. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak before you. I just want to speak in terms of, I'm from Cobb County, and uh, my concern is that we keep the district drawn or pretty much intact the way it is because we don't want to dilute the uh, voting power of uh, the citizens there. Uh, packing all the black voters, or 60% of the black voters into a county uh, just does not seem really feasible to me. Um, as Representative Morgan said, we want to keep the ability to elect the person of our choice into office. And if that impedes the new district drawing, impedes that in any way, uh, that does not serve the purpose of the county. That does not serve the purpose of the people and the will of the people. So I just wanted to come before you and just speak today and let you know that our feeling is that we should just really keep it intact. And that's really all I have to say. Any questions? Senator, I'd appreciate it if you let me recognize you so that I can turn your mic on so that we make sure everybody can hear you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Henson. Thank you. Um, I just want to make a statement that, you know, I, I share your concern. I'm afraid that there might be a, a retrogression uh, issue there that, you know, you, your community has a an effective chance to participate in those elections and that you have a developing minority district and certainly have right now an effective coalition district exactly uh, a crossover district yeah so uh, you know I, I just wanted to say that I, I share your concerns on that issue well thank you senator thank now you. we appreciate it thank you. any other questions okay members of the committee I have brought before you 
a committee substitute for SB 1 EX. <coughs> do I have Senator Kowser? I'd like to move do pass SB 1 EX by committee substitute the LC numbers 28 LC 285802S. I have a motion to move Senate Bill 1 EX by committee substitute LC 285802S. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and I have a second. I wish that you would. I'm going to get there. I know how to chair a committee. We have a motion and we have a second. So we have a matter on the table for consideration. Is there discussion? Senator Henson. First of all, Mr. Chairman, there was a couple statements made at the beginning of session, uh, the meeting, and I'm not going to go over them uh, in entirety. I think from one of the early discussions and dialogues you had with a senator, it was obvious why some of those senators may not have, uh, when you chat, kind of chastise Democrats for not coming to see you early enough in the process or feeling like they were engaged, I, I think we had a demonstration of uh, how some people who were engaged got. There was also the comment about the time that we had plenty of time, and I think that's been discussed. I think that's been debunked that we changed the rules at 1051 on Monday to allow this meeting to be held, and we were supposed to get amendments in or substitutes to the map nine minutes late. Within the nine minutes, seems unreal. But I really would like to know if the chairman, how are we going to proceed during the discussion, whether you are going to uh, go through each of the areas, and I'll wait until the chairman turns his back around. No, Senator, I'm trying to get an answer to your question. Okay. What I'm trying to do. Thank you very much. Um, and also, were you going to go through, Mr. Chairman, the the map? I mean, we, we did some pretty major things here. We have a district in South Georgia, which quite frankly historical significant, as well as a legislator has been there for over 30 years, uh, his district being in the House and Senate, his district being moved up north, his district being of you know, a 42.7 a, a or a, 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 an active crossover district, which is now do, we have an you, open seat. You first started off, you had a statement. I mean, do you have a statement? The question or a is, question? are you going okay, to, number one, number one, are you going to go over the map and present each area and why you've done certain things? Senator, I will do what I can to answer questions. Senator, will you ask answer the question, did you consider uh, District 14 as a crossover district or the minority population in 14 and there the effect with the Voting Rights Act on in Senate District 14 at all in your consideration. Senator, would you, would you please define for me what you mean by a crossover district? Senator, my question is whether or not you feel any district under the 50.1, 50 plus 1 percent African American were to be considered in this map as part of a voting rights issue or voting rights acts issue the voting rights act deals with basically two issues section two and section five it deals with diluting of minority votes section five is retrogression with regard to minority votes the voting rights act with regard to as, as the Voting Rights Act requires us to give minorities the chance to elect candidates of their choice, and that is defined by having population that is at least 50 percent. And there's the way they go about calculating what the right number is based on registration and voter turnout and all that. So the answer to the question is the Voting Rights Act, the requirement we have is to make sure that we do not dilute minority votes which means if we can create a minority, majority minority, majority minority district, then we are to do that, and we cannot go back on the number of majority minority districts that we have. So influence districts, as you define them, are not covered on the Voting Rights Act. Well, I didn't define them. I stated that the 14th, in my opinion, had crossover, was a crossover district. Didn't slight difference between uh, uh, the definitions, but. The, uh, the, so you feel that they're not covered, the, the districts that we, or that I personally feel there's regression in, uh, because they're not 50 plus one, it's, it's not part of the consideration. That's correct. Okay. 
Uh, the other issue, um, there is emerging Hispanic populations uh, in various parts of the state. Uh, one of the largest districts now is in the Gwinnett County area. Did you look to see whether or not uh, a majority Hispanic district could be drawn and or anything close to a majority Hispanic district? And did you consider that in your deliberations? Did not. Did you evaluate during your process Democratic or Republican voting performance, or did you mainly draw the maps for community interest or racial reasons? What, what was your primary goals in drawing the map? The um, principles we laid out, if you remember, we have two legal requirements. Um, the first one being the one person, one vote. Um, I think, I mean, I have lived through it in what we had in Larios case in um, making sure that we adhere to the principle of one person one vote thank you thank you the answer to the question the committee notice went out at 909 Monday morning uh, but um, that not notice what you not what you refer now sure. um, so I want to answer that question. I, I was aware of that. So, well, you said you had nine minutes or something well, like that. So the, the meeting not, notice went out true. before the rules changed. So that's not true. It, the meeting would not have been legitimately called if the meeting it couldn't be called until after the rules changed, which was not until 1151. Senator, I believe you're mistaken. You can take it up with the Secretary of the Senate because I made sure that we had a discussion with him on that. Um, to answer your question on... What was your original question? I'm sorry. Well, you were talking about Larios and uh, the... One uh, person, one vote. Mm -hmm. And then going through and making sure that we looked at districts with one person, one vote. Mm -hmm. um, we do have majority minority districts that have to be considered to make sure that uh, after looking at trying to get one person, one vote, uh, that we do not retrogress on those majority minority districts. And so we had taken into consideration those factors in... Um, compiling those districts as we went through every district in the state and looking at those uh, to make sure we had legal maps. Thank you. Can I uh, further ask, on Section 41, there was some, some comment at some point with someone that said there might be a Section 2 issue. Could you, that's my Senate district, so I'm curious. Yes, sir, Senator, we had, um, we had an issue, a potential Section 2 issue, which, as I understand, uh, would not necessarily prevent us from having these maps pre-cleared, but would uh, make us susceptible to a lawsuit. Um, and then ultimately, if we lost that lawsuit, we would be underturned in that we had a district that uh, had a high degree, a high percentage of, major of, of minority voters in that district, which was right beside a district um, that was uh, had a high percentage. And so we had to look to see if we could create another majority minority district which is with the requirement that we have with section two and we did that and that was that was that was senate district 41 and further senator was there any uh other reasons uh, in your discussions or deliberations with the lot we heard a lot of discussions about fulton and bibb counties and those delegations it seems from a onlooker's eye that you've tried to keep a lot of counties in track and try to prevent counties from being split up. But yet when Fulton County goes from seven re senators to 11 senators, and with all the history of Milton County and other issues, there becomes a concern that that was done for political reasons, and I would hope that you might address and allay or sure. address those concerns. First of all, Bibb County was already split. Um, so, so it's already been split for... Um, Bibb County was already split, and I think that we did an excellent job in the number of counties that were split because we we, we got it, we even uh, split fewer counties, even though we have more population now than what the courts dealt with in 2004. And if you look at the 25th district in trying to get the population, um, there was the opportunity of moving the population of the 25th district into three precincts in Bibb County. And if you will look at the, um, the 18th district right next to it, that basically has 
has these full counties right here. So this little population right there that we put into Bibb County helped us from splitting another county. And so that, that answered that question. Now Fulton County was already a split county. And can I get the Metro? And in working with members of the Senate um, on, um, in conjunction with the information and input that we had, um, I will say this, that the 21st district, that individual, when I met with that individual, had one thing to ask me of doing this, and it was basically work with all the, the adjoining senators and see what you can do to meet their needs, and then I'll take what's left. Um, and so in, in working with that principal, and if you notice right there that he lives right there, I think if he goes on his back porch and looks out, he's looking out over Fulton County. We also had the 48th center from the 48th, who's one of their, one of his priorities was to be taken out of this area. He wanted to be more down in his home county of Gwinnett County. And so that helped right there to meet that need and with this individual willing to take that, took that. I've already addressed what happened in, in South Fulton uh, County with regard to that. The sixth district of which is, um, um, is the result of the public hearings that we had and the overwhelming, like I said, the number, you know, the number one thing that we've heard other than don't do it like you did last time, spe speaking specifically to areas, um, the public, there was a huge outcry for the creation of something that resembled the old Paul Coverdale, Mike Egan, uh, Senate District. And with the other issues that we had with needing districts down here needing population, I think that looking at all that, it fit together pretty well. That's that question. One last question, I'll let some others get a chance if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. And that question is, some members of the caucus you know, may feel their numbers are, uh, you know, kind of packed in too high in African-American votes. Some members might feel it's too low. I've heard a lot of comments on, you know, wh where their uh, numbers are. Did you have any vision or any legal basis for what you considered packing or a low minority district or a high minority district uh, or, you know, what legal grounds maybe under 50 was not considered part of the bench line? The, uh, in sitting down initially and writing this, uh, or, or trying to put the pieces together in speaking with each senator and how to get them to the one person, one vote and the population that they had. And, and in working in conjunction, with the court drawn map, I worked as best I could to meet the legal requirements that I could in trying to keep Senate districts as close to as they represented or as they are right now. Um, and so in meeting the population requirements initially, um, this is what we came up with. And then we did an evaluation of where we stood on the Voting Rights Act. And as I understand with the, and it's, it's more detailed than, than, um, um, a couple sentences in whether or not we actually adhered to the Voting Rights Act. In doing that, in, the, um, in referring to our attorneys on that, then we are okay with the Voting Rights Act. We did not retrogress. All right. Any other questions? Senator Fort. Yes, sir. Uh, question about the 14th. Do you do you agree that the African American community in the 14th is able to elect, elect a candidate of its choice? I apologize. I thought the way the maps that I had. Had, had set up. That's okay. We're, we're in here and we're, mm -hmm. we'll try to get one real quick. I'll, because, sorry, because I'll repeat the question if well, you like. I, I remember the question is just that I wanted to show you the 14th district. 
mm -hmm. where the 14th district currently is on the current map. Mm -hmm. So if you'll wait a minute, let me get that map okay. so I'll be able to address that question. Okay. Can I ask you another question while we're waiting? No, just one at a time, please. One at a time, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't want us to go down that road, then all of a sudden we didn't address this one, and I get accused of not answering one of your questions. All right, now if you repeat your question, I'll... All right, okay. Do you agree that the African-American community, the 14th, is able to elect the A candidate of its choice? This is the 14th right here, this line that runs... No, I'm talking about like the... Like this. Uh, Mr. Chair, current, I'm talking about the, the 14th represented by the Senator current, George Hooks. I'm answering the question. The okay. current 14th is this district right here, mm -hmm. which is all the way through there. And so the question is, does the 14th district, you said the 14th district. Yes, sir. I will tell you that the Voting Rights Act doesn't care about district numbers, but they do care about the people that live in the state. And these people I, right I in here have the opportunity to, the people that live here have the opportunity to elect a candidate of their choice. So you do, um, okay. Okay. Uh, so that was that issue considered was that issue considered when you were uh, drawing this map well, the fact that the uh, African Americans presently have an opportunity to elect the candidate of their choice did you take that into consideration when you drew the new map the Voting Rights Act requires us to do that for those districts that are majority minority districts senator Okay, so, so you did take that into consideration. And so it was one of the considerations that we, that we uh, had to take into account or our maps would not be pretty clear. Okay. And then the, the question then is when you configure the new map and you created two districts as opposed to three that might uh, uh, elect a candidate of the choice, do you think that you met the threshold of the Voting Rights Act? Senator, we had two majority minority districts that were in this area that we had to adhere to the one person, one vote and find the population for them. I could not be able to pass a map that underpopulated a district. Okay. So you believe that the Voting Rights Act allowed you to. I apologize, Mr. Chair. You believe that the Voting Rights Act allowed you to um, do away with the 14th district as a district which allowed African Americans to elect a candidate of their choice. Is that correct? The 14th was not part of the baseline. All right. Um, I wanted to ask you some questions about Fulton County. Um, you know, I heard, I read uh, a little few minutes ago that you said that the drawing of the Fulton County map and the result of would you uh, would you would you start that 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 over with again would yes you, you, you did what I just I understand I've read that you said that the resulting white Republican domination of the Fulton County delegation was an innocent byproduct quote unquote innocent byproduct that's what you quoted in in um, in the uh, AJC that that is an absolute incorrect quote okay so you did not say 
that the results of your drawing of the Fulton County map and the, the resultant white Republican control of the delegation is an innocent byproduct. Again, that is an incorrect quote. All right. Okay. Um, let me ask you another question about that. Was there any consideration given, Mr. Chair, to having the Fulton County Senate delegation reflect the people of Fulton County? Fulton County is 55 percent uh, non-white, 45 percent African-American, about 10 percent Asian and Latino. Um, uh, was there any consideration given to allowing Fulton County's delegation, Senate delegation, to reflect the composition of the people of Fulton County? Senator, as I explained to you, and I don't know what quote you're referring to, but as I explained to you in working with the members of the Senate with regard to their districts, what happened to Fulton County was an innocent product. Never did I make any comment about anyone's race with regard to that. So be very clear that the quote that you said is absolutely incorrect. Okay. I'm, and I, and I'm, I've said, I've explained to you what happened in Fulton County and what happened on those districts that occurred to be that case. Okay? And we have principles that we adhere to in the drawing of each one of those districts, and those principles were adhered to. I understand. I understand your point. All I'm saying, I, I just read something that was quoted in the media. If you say you didn't say it, all well and good. Do the, do the citizens I sure hope that's not an inference on your part, but right. <laughs> I don't make inferences usually. <laughs> you know, if you know me, I usually uh, kind of direct with it, Mr. Chair. But do the citizens, Mr. Chair, go ahead. Do the citizens of Sharpsburg share interest with Fulton County voters? Um, Senator, communities of interest are defined differently by different people, and that is an aspirational, an aspirational principle that we have. There are individuals in Sharpsburg that um, work in Fulton County, um, go to arts and entertainment areas in Fulton County, but I've explained clearly why the 28th district ended up in South Fulton County. Are you saying that the term communities of interest can mean anything at any time to anyone as they see fit, Mr. Chair? Let me, let me, let me interject. I'm looking at the AJC quote. The quote says, quoting me, that with regard to Fulton County, quote, it was an innocent byproduct. End quote. That's a correct quote, Senator. So your okay. your right. comment about inferring uh, the other little thing that you put before that it was was trying to be misleading, and I I, no, I really no. would appreciate that no, if we could Mr. be on the Mr. up Chair, and up. Chair, I'm not going to allow that you. If you read, you said Mr. you read Chair, it. You've objected no, in this committee meeting to people, Senator, Senator, making Senator, personal Senator personal statements. I'm not going to allow you. It, you said I did you not, read you the quote. You cannot tell this and committee. The quote and is, you cannot tell this public about what I'm inferring. Well, we have it on tape. What you said when you That's said fine. you made a comment with a That's quote, fine. and you said you read but it. You I just want to be clear that the quote says it was an innocent byproduct. Do you have another question? As far as an inference is concerned, at the last committee meeting, you used the term liar, and then you object when someone comes before this microphone and uses the same term. If she was out of order, you are as much of out of order. Do you have a question? I'm not going to allow you to do that to me. Uh, Do you believe that um, what you did in drawing the Fulton County map, do you believe that conforms with the Voting Rights Act? I do, yes. Okay. Last question. You know, um, you discussed a conversation you had with the senator from the 35th. Um, and my assumption, and you, I believe this uh, Democratic leader, uh, ask this, but I want to make sure we're clear. Are you saying that private conversations between senators regarding redistricting are not, in fact, private, that you've waived that confidentiality and that 
any member can talk about any conversation they had with you regarding redistricting, Mr. Chair? We have our Senate rules that talk about private conversations between senators and, um, you know. You violated the, that rule. The senator from the 35th, um, the senator from the 35th opened that can of worms, and all I did was try to give the facts with regard to what she said. I think you, I think you Are there violated any questions? the questions. Did you violate the rule, Mr. I did not. Which microphone do you want to use? Mr. Chairman, I have a question regarding, um, since you're talking about Fulton County, the, the composition. Uh, was Senator Fort's district part of the bench line? I'm sorry? Was Senator Fort's district part of the bench line that you mentioned earlier? Yes. It was? As far as my understanding. Okay. And what was the bench line again? That we... The, the bench line? Yeah. The, uh, is the 2010 census on the 2006 districts. Okay, 2010 on, okay. A um, couple of constituents came that um, I'm going to be happy to represent, um, and it has to do with the 6th district. And so I, being that my new rep, um, and some people make comments regarding that. Can you tell us the factors leading to the creation of the proposed new 6th district? The, I'm sorry. Can you tell us the factors that led to the creation of the new proposed 6th district? Yes. As I, as I stated before, we had um, lots of public com comments that asked for the recreation of uh, the old Paul Coverdale, Mike Egan district that was in that area. That was it. You, you pulled the senator from um, Cobb County, which, as we heard earlier from listening to the rep and other members from Cobb County into that area. Um, what's the, what is now the composition, the rape, racial composition and political demography in this new district? I don't have that with me, but it's on the information that you can get from the redistricting office. Okay, so you made changes, and of course we listened to. I'm having a interest. hard time hearing you. You made changes, and we listened to the, the the communities of interest, and so Cobb is now coming and saying that that's not a community of interest. Um, I'm 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 still trying to understand that you know the changes that you made in pulling, and and coming up with the new proposed sixth district. Well, Senator, again, mm -hmm. I. The number one principle I have to adhere to is one person, one vote. So every Senate district has to have 173, 172, 994 um, in, in composing that. We had many districts in here that were underpopulated. And in working to figure out how we come up with districts in these areas to make sure that we meet the population requirement, make sure we meet the Voting Rights Act, um, and with, we had to hear with the comment more public comment than we see than anything other than don't do this what you did before and um, or what was done before and um, and um, and it was a historical district that people came and asked for so we were able to do it and we did it okay um, do you consider the current six district to be a crossover district how do you define a crossover district you defined it it was defined earlier explain for me you're asking the question how would you define a crossover district um, I think what the demography of, of the district currently showed a certain percentage um, that the individuals were able to elect a senator or the person of their choice, as was mentioned earlier by our rep and the person that made public comment. That district, um, I'm not looking at the current percentages, but that has a certain trending that um, Representative Morgan talked about that allowed them to elect a person of their choice who I believe from looking at the, um, the percentages, which I'm not looking at, would be considered um, allowing that district to elect a person of, the, uh, uh, of their choice, which is what she said when she came in to talk about that. So, um, Senator, the... I've had a tough time following that, and so I'll just respond that we have no legal duty to draw a district as you explained it right there. So, Can I interrupt right here? 
no. Okay. Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Senator Henson. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, that's a good question. The crossover district, I would think, would be a minority population with a white population would cross over and vote for candidates that can include a minority or minority candidate, but allow impact of the minority community. But it's a good question. So I wouldn't mind if uh, our legal counsel, because I think there is defined pretty much in law uh, what crossover coalition districts and minority districts are. So if, if your attorney or yourself could give us what legal advice you've been given to go through the maps, if they could tell us what the definition, so we can all be concerned with the legal definition, our committee attorney who represents all of us in the Senate on this committee uh, thinks a crossover district, coalition district, and minority district are. That would help. The, the attorneys that we have are can be responsible to members of this committee, and you can uh, you have, feel free to, to, to inquire the attorney that question. Are there any questions? Senator Ford. Yeah, are you saying that council that we're paying $10,000 a month to is not available to answer questions at this time to members of this committee? Senator, they are available to answer questions of the General Assembly because they are implied by the General they are employed by the General Assembly at this at this time. Senator Ford. Thank you. I've never been in a committee where legal counsel was not able to ask questions from members. Is there any is there any legal counsel present today? Legislative counsel. Can legislative counsel ask answer questions? Yes, they can. All right. Okay. I, I just want to establish that. I don't know if Senator Henson had question yeah I guess the cross what what is what is a crossover district and how is that defined and if yeah, I think that would help those in pursuing these these issues Senator, in the past I know just looking at case law I'm not the, the term crossover district is not one that I'm generally familiar with an influence district is one that I am familiar with which was usually used to designate a district that was less than 50 percent of the minority Population, minority population, less than 50 percent, but in which there was a sufficient amount of population there, usually better than 35 percent or so, which could influence the vote, and as a result, they have to take into account the interest of that minority community. In other words, they may not be able to elect the candidate of their choice, but they could not be ignored because you had the potential of putting together what you're probably referring to a coalition. Uh, with the majority, with some of the majority going with the minority and being able to elect the candidate there. Uh, that's usually the common definition. The Voting Rights Act is not been focusing on influence districts of late. Uh, if you've not been able to draw a majority minority, it's not been as much uh, an issue of late in the case law. But that was the definition that was used for many, many years. Does that answer your question, Senator? Uh, yes, you're saying that crossover district is not necessarily legally defined. I'm not Influ that influence that. is, um, what about effective, effective districts, effective minority districts? I'm not agree with that particular term is used. Uh, that people have different terms used for different things. For a long time, we about whether or not you have enough um, minority population in the district to elect, truly elect members of the minority population. That 
that's where we came up in the old days with 65% number. Uh, you had 55% to ensure that you had the majority, another 5% to take into account uh, traditional uh, low turnout in the minority community, and another 5% was added to take into account traditional underrepresentation uh, of voter registration levels in minority community. So that's where, for a long time, they came up with the idea of 65% as being a safe, I mean, that used to be a word that people would use if you may recall, a safe district. And if that's what we're talking about, about being effective, then at one point in time, that was what it took to be a safe district. You didn't want to go beyond that, of course, because you'd start getting an issue with packing. Anything less than that, question of whether or not you would be able to elect people who don't use it. Since that time, though, in later case decisions, reflecting the change of Reflecting the change in the people, in, in the way things happen, and the fact that minority uh, reg voter registration has improved, minority turnout has improved, uh, the number, uh, that 65% number has dwindled downward and downward and to the point now where uh, it's generally recognized that if you do have a majority minority district, that probably would be effective in electing people of uh, that minority's own choosing. Uh, I can't give you a number there uh, based on what I remember the case law, but that's generally what I would think would be an effective district in the normal parlance. How close am I on that one, Senator? Um, let me ask this question. If Then is the fourth, in your, your explanation of what an influence district is, is the, is the 14th district a influence district? So I don't have any of the numbers. I do not. I, nothing to base it on. I don't have any of the numbers for that district. Okay. I think I do, but I'll. I'll I would say this: if if the district numbers the uh, the the uh, minority population, that district was less than fifty percent, but was probably above thirty percent, then it would probably constitute what used to be called an influence district. It's above forty percent. Okay, it would okay. probably be considered an influence district under the old parlance. Senator Cowser. Council, while we got you to answer these questions, uh, are these what you referred to or defined as influence districts included in the baseline? Under the voting rights have they, today, they're looking only at majority minority in terms of determining retrogression. Okay. Uh, the influence districts are not taken into account any longer under the most recent case law, to my understanding, in determining whether or not there's been retrogression as far as Section 5 preclearance issues are considered. Does the law require us to draw or protect these uh, influence districts you're referencing? At this point, and to my knowledge, no. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Very brief. I know you're getting tired, and I appreciate your patience, and I appreciate you going through this. I really do, as well as you have. I just have a couple questions that came up in the last dialogue, and that really is to our attorney, Lewis. Uh, when she mentioned that the, uh, you know, not the Minister of Affairs, but the committee that the Lieutenant Governor and Speaker Chair uh, hire her. So I was wondering, I, earlier I thought I was a client as a legislator. So I am not your client? <clears throat> and just, just for you, and I think you answered the question you know, easily and honestly. You don't see any conflict in your role with this committee or reapportionment and your role as uh, counsel for the Georgia Republican Party. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a motion to adopt Senate Bill 1EX, LC 285802S by committee substitute. And I have a second. I'll ask the secretary of the committee to call the roll for your yes or no vote on passage of SB 1EX by committee substitute. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Calvin. Yes. Chairman, I want myself as a yes. Senator Balfour. Yes. Senator Chain. Yes. Senator Ford. No. Um, Senator Hawkinson is absent. Senator Henson. No. Senator Judson Hill. Yes. Senator Jackson. Yes. Senator Rogers. Yes. Senator Schaefer? Yes. Senator Staten? Yes. Senator Tate? Yes. Senator Collison? Yes. President Pro Tem? Yes. Chairman, I have 11 yes. Three no's. Three no's. And that would carry that. 
We have a quorum. We have a vote of a quorum, 11 to 3. The bill passes. The committee now rests in the Rules Committee. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.